We want to bring in Fran Townsend. She was Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Advisor to President George W. Bush. She's now a CBS News Senior National Security Analyst, and she joins us from Washington. Uh, Fran, uh, you were once a part of the White House's national security team. Talk about the implications of a shakeup like this. Well, you know, I, it's sort of unprecedented to think that someone at that senior level was caught on a foreign intelligence surveillance wiretap uh, talking to a... I think we've got to assume that Mike Flynn, spent, having spent more than 30 years uh, in the intelligence community and in public service, had to understand that the likelihood that this this conversation would have been tapped. I mean, it, it's got to be that he didn't remember in all the phone calls he made uh, that he'd had this conversation. Although I, I have to say, you know, inside the White House, trust is the most important, important commodity you have in terms of your credibility with the president. And so the president and vice president had to be asking themselves, how is he going to be able to continue to enjoy their trust and the trust of his colleagues? They didn't have much of a choice at this point. So a group of Democratic uh, congressmen are now demanding a classified briefing by all of the relevant agencies on what transpired with General Flynn. So I guess the question is, what other questions do they need answered? And do you think more heads will roll over this incident? You know, it's hard to say whether or not more in, more heads will roll. Let's remember that the other individuals who've come up in this, Paul Manafort, Carter Page, aren't, did not join the administration. And so their names have surfaced as being part of this counterintelligence probe. I think if I was an, an overseer on Capitol Hill, I want to see the transcripts. You know, we're talking about what this what these conversations were but we're getting it second and third hand they don't have to have that problem um, I think they want to hear directly from investigators sort of what do you have now what did you tell the White House when did you tell them I'll tell you the White House is sort of in a no-win position when the, when Sally Yates walks this information in if they had taken action against Flynn then they might have been accused of obstructing an ongoing investigation and so they were in a difficult position, frankly, from the moment they got this information from the Justice Department. Uh, let's talk about that, uh, Fran. Sally Yates, uh, you mentioned her. The Washington Post is reporting that the Justice Department was concerned that General Flynn's conversation with the Russian ambassador could make him vulnerable to Russian blackmail. Explain for us why that might have been their assessment. Well, if, if General Flynn had come out and said, yes, I talked about sanctions, he would have been transparent and the Russians wouldn't have known anything that the president and the White House didn't know. But if you presume that what's known publicly is he's denied the allegations and you know for a fact that the Russians know, because you've got the tape, that he did in fact talk about sanctions, they worried that the Russians might perhaps blackmail General Flynn and say, look, we're going to tell the president that you actually did discuss sanctions with us, so you better do what we say. That, I think, is the concern that the Justice Department had that tipped them over the balance that they did in fact need because he, he seemed to be dishonest or not transparent about his conversations. That's what tipped them over that they had to tell the White House. So, you know, the question is, if the DOJ says, look, we gave this information almost a month ago, we shared it almost a month ago, why do you think it took so long to come to light? Well, you know, it, because it's an ongoing investigation, I think the White House felt, must have felt constrained about whether or not they could act, probably hoping that they, the investigation would unfold more quickly and they'd have it resolved one way or another, when they, and, and they, the Justice Department would inform them of that. And so that's why I say the Justice Department's in a, the, the White House is in a tough spot, having gotten information that there's an ongoing investigation, but it's not yet resolved, when and can they act without being accused of interfering? Mm. Uh, Fran, obviously the president now needs to find a new national security advisor. Uh, what sort of qualities should they be looking for uh, to fill this void by General Flynn? I mean, there have been names that have been uh, bandied about. David Petraeus, Vice Admiral Harward of CENTCOM. What are you hearing? So we've heard three names. General Petraeus, uh, Keith Kellogg, who is the chief of staff to General Flynn, has been named as the interim, and Vice Admiral Bob Harwood. I, I know all of them. All of them are quite capable and competent sort of former military officers. The, the, I think probably Bob Harwood, uh, who I had the privilege of serving with in the White House, has been in tougher knife fights. And that's saying something here in Washington these days. Um, he served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He comes sort of with no baggage, right? Right. He, there's, he's got 
no security issues in his background. He's got no direct ties to General Flynn. I think Harwood comes the cleanest, if you will, out of this. He's got an incredibly close relationship with Mattis. He served as his deputy at CENTCOM. Um, he is a tough, smart, and very strong leader. And what the president needs now is somebody to come in, no nonsense, focus on the very important issues like North Korea, Russia, Iran, uh, and settle down the staff and move forward uh, and put, help, help the president to put this controversy behind position as soon as possible. Like you said, there's a lot going on, Fran. Fran Townsend, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.